You know, I know how everyone on YouTube is talking about how you have to have a story to whatever you're doing, but sometimes you just want some shortcuts. So I actually got this request online. Someone requested another shortcuts video from me. So here I am. I'm going to do a Pro Tools shortcuts video. So for this video, I'm going to give you 10 shortcuts that I've been using a ton recently. So these are the ones that popped into my head as some of the shortcuts that I use the most. I'm skipping some that have been used multiple times in other videos. So I'll put some cards to other videos up on the screen that you can check out. But you know, for example, I've covered how to make a marker, how to jump to a marker. I've done that a million times in a bunch of different videos. So I did not put that one in this video, even though it's one of the shortcuts that I do use the most. But you know, that's not to say I won't be repeating any shortcuts. I probably have mentioned a bunch of these before. All right, so the first one, number one, is just zooming, right? So I use R and T to zoom. So T zooms in, R zooms out. I use that one a ton. I also, a little less frequently, I will use command and brackets to zoom. It kind of just depends on which hand I have free. So if my right hand is free, I might use command brackets. If my left hand is free, I might use R and T. So one thing to keep in mind is if your R and T do not work, that might mean that keyboard commands focus mode is not on in Pro Tools. And so what keyboard commands focus mode does is it just enables some shorter shortcuts to work. So what I would do is I would look up here at this A to Z icon and see if it's yellow. If it's not yellow, if it's like this, you'll notice that shorter shortcuts like R and T, I'm hitting it right now, they do not work. So you just have to click it and make it active and that's it. So R and T to zoom is a really good one. That's probably one that I've covered before on this channel, to be honest. And the second one that I wanna cover is the nudge function. So in Pro Tools, you'll notice we have this nudge option up here at the top and you can set your nudge value. So I'm gonna set mine really small. I'm gonna set it to one millisecond. This is what I like to do is one millisecond nudges. That's what I tend to do the most uh, just for like micro timing stuff with songs and beats. I might take like all the snares and try nudging them forward by a few milliseconds and then back behind the beat by a few milliseconds and see which one feels better. Um, but you can also change the unit of measurement here if you want. So you can set your nudge value. And then once you set your nudge value, you can click on any clip. I'm going to hit T to zoom in because we want to see this few millisecond jump here and I'm at one millisecond. So if I hit the comma on my keyboard, you'll notice it jumps by one millisecond. If I hit the period, it's gonna jump to the right. So you can nudge things that way. And also kind of included in the shortcut in my mind is the M and the question mark. So just on the outside of the period and the comma, and those are just larger nudge increments. So you'll notice I just hit M, so it jumped that way. Now I'll hit the question mark. It's also like kind of a little backslash and it'll jump that way. I believe that the way this works is it's just gonna do the next increment up. So I believe it'll jump by 10 milliseconds. So let's test it. So I'm gonna hit the M. So I think that should be 10 milliseconds. Now I'm gonna hit the period to go to my to my right, <laughs> to, to the right on the screen. And I'm gonna hit that 10 times. We'll see if it arrives back at the grid line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, cool. So I think also, let's test it again. Let's do 10 milliseconds. Let's do this 100 to 500. That'll be a good test. So if I do... That's 100. Let's zoom out so we can kind of see what's going on. So I just hit the comma. I'm going to hit the period to go back. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's hit the question mark back of the grid line. Yeah, so it's just jumping up by one unit of measurement for you. So yeah, this shortcut, I use it all the time to move things around. Sometimes it's just like, oh, hey, this, for example, maybe this is a bass note, right? This bass note is just a little bit behind the beat and it feels a little weird. I might then hit period to nudge it forward, although now I'm set to 100 milliseconds, so it's going way too far. That's why I often have it set to one millisecond, just because of the way I tend to use it. So I can be like, there, now it's good. And I didn't have to drag and drop. It just feels faster and smoother to use that shortcut. Now, another one that I've started using more and more, I used to use the F1, F2, F3, and F4 to jump between the edit modes up here. And now what I often do instead is I'll just use the little tilde key to jump between the edit modes. And usually I'm just living in grid. I don't do this super often, but I do use it often enough that I'm still putting it on this list. And occasionally I'll bump something, you know, and it'll jump and then I have to uh, switch back into the grid mode. But usually I'm living in grid mode. So yeah, that's like the little tilde key. I think that's what it's called. I'll have to double check. I, if, if I have it wrong, I'll put text on the screen, but I'll also show you the key so you can see it. Now with that said, I do tend to live in the grid mode. And what I love to do, you'll notice based on the grid value, 
you can only drag, let me set this grid value to a smaller value. You can only drag something to the nearest grid line with grid mode. And you know, same thing with relative grid mode, you can just drag it by a grid increment, right? So in grid mode, you're kind of stuck. And what if you want to, for example, do what we just did, but not with the nudge function, actually get it to drag and drop while you're in grid mode and you don't want to swap out of grid mode. The way I do that is I hold command and then I click and drag. And that'll just suspend grid mode temporarily. So you notice I'm not holding command now and it won't let me jump to between the grid line like I just did, right? So I have to hold command and drag and drop. So this one I use a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. This one I use like every day, multiple times, many, many times a day. And it's super helpful because it, it's so inconvenient to jump out of grid mode. You know, it's, it's so much easier to just hold command and it's kind of as if you're in slip mode all of a sudden. So that's a great way to move things around if you want to. Now, another one that I use, let me just throw some plugins on here. I'm just going to throw a couple of plugins that I tend to throw onto tracks. Maybe I'll do like the DS or two. Now, another thing that I like to do pretty frequently is I like to kind of A-B test whether what I added actually improved things on the track, right? And this I do less and less the more experience I have, but it's still helpful. I still find it helpful every so often. So what you can do is you can highlight a track. You'll notice I highlighted this nameplate for this track where it says perk here. See how it's white instead of grayed out like these other ones, right? So it's highlighted right now. That's the nameplate being highlighted. So my whole track is highlighted. And so now that I have it highlighted, I can hold shift and hit A and it'll bypass all my plugins on that track. So I can really quickly just compare and contrast and hear the difference, right? I can hear if what I added was an improvement. So I love doing that shortcut. That one's a pretty good one. And you'll notice, let me just option and click and drag these. You'll notice if I highlight multiple tracks here, it'll work on multiple tracks at once. And that's just holding Shift A. I don't have to hold Option or anything in addition to that. I'm just doing Shift A right now to bypass and then unbypass multiple plugins on a track. So that was number five. So number six, I know this one has come up before in my videos. And that's the idea of using P and semicolon to retain a highlight but move up or down in the session. So you'll notice I highlighted this clip here. I'm just going to put it towards the middle. And if I hit semicolon, my highlight travels down. If I hit P, it travels up. So this is a really great way to copy paste things and retain their exact location and time within your session, right? So for example, let me just like throw some stuff over here. So it's a, like not as blocky and they're all kind of in the same spot. So if I want to copy this one down a track, for example, or a couple of tracks, I can do command C and then semicolon to go down and then command V and it'll paste it for me. So that is super helpful because otherwise, you know, if you copy, let me do undo actually, if you copy this and then you try to like figure out how to get it down here at the same exact time, you might notice that it's going to be in a different spot. If you're on grid mode, it's a lot easier to do that properly. But, but yeah, it's just become a thing for me to use P and semicolon. And then I don't have to worry about what mode I'm in. I don't have to worry about, you know, certain things. It just retains that time frame for you, retains that highlight. And I also do that a lot for copying automation, right? I'll highlight automation and do command C and then go up to another automation lane and paste it. Okay, so this next one, number seven, is the idea of using A and S to trim files. So if you find something that you want to trim, let's say, for example, maybe I want to trim this percussion track so it doesn't come in immediately. It comes in a little bit later. Keep things interesting, right? I can just click where I want to trim it and I can hit A and it'll trim from the beginning of the clip to that point. And it's the same idea for trimming to the end. We're just going to use a slightly different shortcut. So we can use S and then I'll trim from the end of the clip to where you have your cursor. So A and S are super useful for trimming either the start or the end of a clip. Now a similar idea to this but a slightly different function, this is going to be number eight on our list, is using D and G to fade. So I can click somewhere and if I hit D it's going to fade from the beginning of that clip to where my cursor is. And the same thing except if I use G it's going to fade to the end, right? From the end to where my cursor is. Now we can also, let me just hit tab here and then zoom in, see what I have going. I'm just going to delete these and kind of fill in the gap so we can talk about crossfades. So if we want, we can do a crossfade. I'm going to drag these so there's some content on both of them that's overlapping so we can actually make our crossfade. And what I can do is I can highlight, let me drag this guy over too so we have overlap on both clips. We can highlight the range that we want to crossfade and then we can just hit F and that'll do a crossfade for us. So it's D, G, and F all in series on the keyboard. Fade in, crossfade, fade out. D, F, 
and then G. And so I guess for number nine, what we should talk about is batch fading, because I do use that a ton too. So if we want to do batch fades on a series of clips, I'm just going to delete these fades. We can do Command F after we've highlighted the clips. And you can do this across multiple tracks too. So I could include all this if I wanted to. And we just hit Command F. And then we can choose our settings for our fades and then hit OK. And now it's made those fades for me. So if I hit tab here to jump to the beginning of my clip and I zoom in with my T, I can see that fade that it made. And it should be the same length that we had in our fade dialog. So let's go to minutes and seconds. There it is, two milliseconds, perfect. And then if we hit tab, it made crossfades per our instructions, two milliseconds long. So I use that a lot, and I use that a lot if I want to do a bunch of editing all at once. I don't worry about the fades until the end, and then I'll highlight and do Command F, and then I can quickly make a bunch of fades just to avoid the potential speaker pop that happens if you have a waveform that's not at zero and you just cut it without a fade. You can often get a speaker pop, so it helps you avoid that. Uh, so it can just help you have good habits for editing, and then it can also help you do a bunch of fades for more creative reasons, you know, it's however you want to use it. So that's Command F to batch fade things. So that's it. That's 10 shortcuts in Pro Tools. I hope someone out there finds this helpful. If you want to work together on your music, please feel free to check out my website. It's catonoise.com. I have a get started button. You can hit that. Tell me a few things about your music. And then it takes you to a calendar where you can actually book a call with me. It's a free, no obligation call just to figure out if we're a good fit, if we want to work together. So please feel free to check that out. It's catonoise.com. And other than that, please like, comment, subscribe hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash noise. And we have additional content. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're doing a book club in the Discord server. It's been so much fun. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. My camera's going to die any second, so <laughs> I'm going to run. But um, I've been going crazy with all these squishies. Look at this. I got all these different squishies. This one is like gooey stuff inside and it's a gummy bear. And then I got my donut and then I got these two new ones. So I got these at a guide dogs meeting. So I have this one, which is full of sand. It's kind of cool. It's like a little dog. And then I have this one, which is kind of unfortunate looking, but he's full of air, which is different than the other ones. So I've been going crazy with these there. It's kind of bad. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it's fun. I hope you're all doing well.